people of the internet, a very well welcome to episode number 30 of the Developing Dads podcast. It's kind of funny and a little bit ironic. Ironic? Is that even the right word, Neil? I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm just going to run with it. The idea that we are at six months and this podcast is supposed to be a six month review of how we've been getting on, how we've been doing with this, this whole podcasting thing, how we've been getting on with our goals that we set earlier on in the year. And for all those people out there wondering how we record these and do these, this has ha- easily been the hardest one to get done because we have technology failing us. We're trying to use different things. We're trying to do different bits and pieces. So bear with us. We, this is about the fourth time I think we've had this conversation for up to about 20 minutes and then the software has failed. So we're on a new recording setup. Usually we use Riverside. Riverside is like a recording, all-encompassing recording podcasting thing, which is, it was good for a while, but it had glitches, which were super annoying because you'd be have to do a podcast and it would just glitch out and fail. Now we're trying to do this through recording on our own platforms. So Neil's recording his computer and I'm recording on a sound recorder thing. So hopefully the sound's going to be all good. But equally, anyway, I've kind of moaned enough about this whole whole juggery pokery thing. I'm amazed that we've got to episode number 30, our six month review. We're going to go through all of our goals, go through our things. But first and foremost, we always start our podcasts with a how are you? Because it's good to think, find out weekly how we're both getting on, what we've been up to. <laughs> this, I guess, has been two weeks just because we have, have been away doing things and which I'll update you, of course. But Neil, how are you for about the fourth time? And <laughs> how how's your couple of past, past couple of weeks been? Yeah, I should have perfected this now. Um, as you say, it's been two weeks and week one was a bit of a full of drama, full of like standard middle life crisis stuff where I um car went into the garage and needs lots and lots and lots of work done and um it's gonna take lo- a long, long time because parts for, for cars are few and far between. So we still don't have our car back. It's been two weeks, it's probably gonna be three or four weeks. And I've gone from a seven seater car to a nice citron cactus, which isn't fun. Um especially when we're taking the kids camping next weekend and there's not a chance in hell that things are gonna get in our car. So yeah, I've been on at the quick fit, call them out. They've been an absolute atrocious to deal with. Never going to go back again, but my cars can't drive it. and It's stuck in the garage. So anyway, that was drama number one. And then about an hour later, when I got a call back from the car garage, um, I was coming downstairs in the house and I noticed there was a few drops in the hallway floor, looked up and there's a big bulge. And it turns out that we've had a slow leak in one of our pipes upstairs for the best part of three to six months, they reckon, because it's such a small drop. And um, and I was frantically trying to find out where to put the water off, checked all standard places under the kitchen sink, in the downstairs bathroom, couldn't find it. For some reason, it was in some weird cupboard in the kitchen that wasn't near the sink. So thankfully, I've got a nice friend who's a plumber and was taking me through FaceTime how to fix this leaking pipe. So it wasn't too bad, and I don't think there's any lasting damage. It's all kind of dried up now, thanks to the good weather. So that was week one of drama. Um, week two was much more chilled. I went to London for a few days with work, um, mixture of customer meetings, workshops, and a company social slash quarterly update from the CEO. And that was good fun. Um, got to see the colleagues again, got to socialize with them, got to meet some customers. And like, I actually met a friend that, that is from Edinburgh, met him down there because he was working down there. Like, we've almost got the best of both worlds. We live in Scotland, which is awesome. And we get to, we're being paid to be in London. Like, they're paying for accommodation. They're paying for us to have meals, eat our lunch and breakfast and stuff. So it's like, yeah, the best of both worlds. We get to enjoy London City, but don't have to live here, and um, which is good. There's nothing wrong with living in London. <laughs> I've lived here for uh, 10 and a half years. And look at me. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um I'm not a fan. I love visiting it, but I could never live in it. Anyway, week, week two. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm holding you for this one. This is <laughs> this is an outrageous comment. Like, I get it. Central London is, it's a busy place. It's hectic. It's difficult. It's expensive. It's sweaty. It's smelly. But people don't live in central London. People live in Colesden, where I live, Neil, which is very much like Dunfermline, where you live. It's on a little cul-de-sac. It's quite <laughs> quiet. It's nice. But... What you get to do is you get to dip your toe into one of the best cities, if not the best city in the world, whenever you want to. And you also reap the rewards of the salaries and incomes that come with ultimately working in a region like that. <laughs> You're also surrounded by about four okay. different international airports where you can jet off to luxurious locations. Edinburgh, where does that fly to? Malaga. 
<laughs> Ibiza. <laughs> exactly. All the places anyway. you go. Yeah. Um and week two, yeah, London trip got back Friday night. Kids are now off to Sky for a week with their in laws, which is fantastic. And I've started a new project in my garden, which I'm sure will feature in a few podcasts to come. But I'm building a, an outdoor kitchen. Yeah, and Neil, Neil regret it, regret, regrettably didn't actually say what he said the first time. He said his project name is the new, <laughs> was it the new garden kitchen. That's the that's the project name. So Neil's, yeah, Neil's imagination was running away with him. So I've been landscaping today. I've been digging lots and lots. I am. Um, I actually set my Garmin to to workout mode, and I burnt over a thousand calories digging, which which made me feel pretty good. What a hero what? you are, Neil! What an absolute I've, hero! I've probably consumed consumed that because you see the calories, and you're like, I can eat that again. <laughs> it's not actually a thousand calories I've burnt. It's probably fifty percent of that. Easily, Neil. I was talking. We're in uh, <laughs> before I get to my my little uh, holiday thing. We're in LA eating In and Out Burger, and I've also got the calories and everything. And you totaled it up whilst you're in your, your drive through because obviously you've not run there or anything. You've just driven your 3.6 litre V8 off-road hire car. And uh, I think it was over 2,000 calories for a burger, chips and uh, milkshake. <laughs> wow. So there you go. Mad. Um, cool. So yeah, that's my couple of weeks. Next week is um, I'm off work. Rebecca's off work. So lots of chilling, gardening, time, outdoors. And the weather's meant to be awesome. Just finding yourself, Neil. Finding yourself, your relationship, all that kind of stuff next week. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, Gordon, how's your how's your two weeks been? A lot more exciting than mine, I bet you. Well, I, I hope I hope I can come across a little bit more excited with the fourth time that we've had to go through this. Neil, <laughs> Neil definitely felt like he was trudging through mud because he had to explain himself again. So I apologise for my uh, brother being a little bit grumpy, but that's 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 him. That's up to him. You know, he's he's tired after he's digging. <laughs> Either either way, yes. Thanks for asking, Neil. The past two weeks have been really good. Um, I have been on holiday, which I'll get to shortly. The first start of the holiday, I drove ten hours up to up to uh, Dunfermline, where me and Neil did a couple of podcasts. We managed to take the two weeks off because sometimes we batch record them, so we did a, a recording just that night where we had a couple of beers and had a chat. But then we also did a really cool podcast that's been really actually pretty well on on the downloads front, which I'm chuffed about. But that was in the Junket Cafe, the vegan slash. The vegan cafe in uh, Dunfermline, kind of. And that was a really fun thing because I've been wanting to do that since we started this podcast. So it was a, a fun little chat in there and a, a nice wee cake and a wee, a, wee, a wee coffee, which was great. The reason I was up in uh, Scotland was actually for a wedding. So I attended the wedding the next day. Then uh, the, ne- the following day after that, after having drinks until about 2 a.m., sensibly, I started drinking water after midnight just c- in case anyone's concerned about my driving habits and what I was up to. But we, uh, yeah, I drove back home again another 10 hours. So I got home at about 8 p.m. or something. Then the next morning, I was up at about half five to take a flight to America. And we went to Seattle, took baby on a flight for the first time. And she did amazingly. Absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with it. Flew there, flew to Seattle, spent some time in Seattle with uh, our in-laws came with us. It was me, Laura, baby. And we went to a wedding, which was really, really fun. So I had my kilt in Seattle. However, tweed, double tweed, actually, and a woolen uh, skirt. Is not necessarily the most comfortable thing ever on a uh, trip to America when it's 30-odd degrees. So that was kind of a bit wow. sweaty. Lots of people asking you for photos? Of course. Not photos, Neil. What no. they wanted to tell me was their ancestry. They wanted to tell me <laughs> that part of Everybody's from, Scottish. They came from some place in Scotland somewhere, their grandfather, grandmother, someone was Scottish. And it even got to the point with the end of the evening, you know, it's 12 o'clock and we've all had a few drinks and we're all a bit pissed. Before, I couldn't even leave without someone telling me that they were part Scottish. It was incredible. Wow. I know. I know. Amazing. But either way, that was really fun. Actually, there was one funny part. We got to the airport. Laura turns to me and she goes, <gasps> and I was like, what? What's happened? She's like, I've forgotten your kilt socks. I know. Like, it's, it's almost the only thing, right? You know, you, you could forget the sporing, you'd probably be okay. You could forget the jacket probably be okay you could forget the waistcoat probably be okay socks like you, you can't do your kilt without a sock neil can you so what did you do well i'm glad you asked football socks <laughs> no 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 i did a bit of googling apparently seattle have a kilt shop <laughs> wow with kilt socks so gordon emailed them messaged them i had bridget who was coming with us to the wedding she's an american she lives in america obviously in seattle whatever else 
She uh, phoned them up, asked them if they had any uh, spare kilt socks. They said, yes, $7. So I bought two pairs, a grey pair and a black pair, just to be sure. They were a bit thinner, so they weren't quite the nice, sexy ones that I have, because I got my kilt for my wedding, 21st century kilts, shout out, they're amazing. But at the end of the day, yeah, rocked up to this random-ass kilt place, and there we were, buying two pairs of kilt socks, and off, off we went to the wedding. Nice, nice one. How random, how random is that? That is pretty cool. Then, from there, Neil, we went to LA, so Los Angeles, hung out in Santa Monica, hit a 5K 2022 PB, which was like 24 minutes, 22 seconds or something, 24, some, something around that. Not my fastest, you know, I'm a bit of a fat dad at the moment, so I was definitely carrying it on the early morning run, so it was a good 20-odd, mid-20s, maybe high 20s by the times I went for a run, and you know the difference between running in 10 degrees and running in 30 degrees, Neil, it's, it's absolutely brutal. But either way, I felt good, and it was flat, and it's nice, and it's Santa Monica. It's like an iconic LA place to go. So we hung out there for a week, did a bit of the sort of 4th of July stuff, went to a nice restaurant. I also turned 35. That was kind of interesting, turning 35. I'm now getting very close to 40, which feels, (laughs) you know. Yes. Like when you're 20, you think of yourself as very young. Well, you don't think of yourself as young, but you look at 30-year-olds and think, God, you know. I'm going to be so grown up when I'm 30. And then when you're 30, you look at 40-year-olds and you go, wow, I'll be really grown up when I'm 40. (laughs) And here I am, 35, right in the middle. And I don't have any reflections on anything at all, apart from I've done all right to 35, so might as well just keep going, see what happens. Uh, And then, so did that. Then we went to uh, Costa Mesa, which is kind of a bit more south. It's near Newport Beach, Huntington Beach kind of area south of LA. Hung out there. Did some bits and pieces, went shopping, went to like this Disneyland downtown, which was quite cool. Met some friends that we met on our travels. And that was that. And then we got back yesterday. So I've been struggling with jet lag. Boo-hoo me. But if if anyone here who's a developing dad, or even a developing parent for that matter, a uh, jet lagged baby on an eight hour time difference is it's not the one. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's not the one. It's uh it's pretty tough because she got up at we put her to bed at 9 p.m. She got up about midnight and stayed up till about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Just wow. either either crying because we wouldn't pick her up or we put her in her bed, which we try not to do because we try to not, not like have her in her bed, basically. And she would just like play with your face, like make noises, ooze and goos and giggles. And you're like, please, please, I just want to sleep. But you're really cute. <laughs> so that was a little bit of a pain, I guess. But that's pretty much it. That's my... Oh, and the house. The house has pretty much been well i say finished as in the skeleton has been painted it's nice and white it just needs its kitchen which gets delivered tomorrow and then fitted on friday over the weekend then it's flooring then it's done and i can my bank account can sigh a state of relief i guess nice i'm looking forward to to yeah when it's finished and i can enjoy it come down well you you can enjoy it wearing gloves and special (laughs) shoes (laughs) Your kids will be anyway. They'll be in hazmat suits from top to bottom. I'll bring all their cranes and their paints and their... Nope, nope, chalk. won't get in the door. No, I'll put them in the skip outside. In fact, I might even put them in the asbestos shed. All right, that'll teach them. <laughs> anyway, will we move on to the... Oh, the topic the, at hand. The topic. Neil. Yes. So, like I said, at the start of this podcast, as introducing it, I said we are in episode 30 and we are six months into this journey of our weekly podcast. I feel it amazing that we've managed to commit to this even though this has been the most challenging one to potentially record, we haven't actually had that many hiccups. Let's be honest, Neil. If you think about it, we've done pretty well at you know, churning these out week on week. We've had some in-person ones. We've had some uh, Riverside ones. We've had some guest speakers. We've had all sorts of bits and pieces, but thoroughly enjoyed it. And with that, Neil came up with a great idea of saying, hey, why don't we do a six-month review? Because in episode one, we did our sort of 2022 goals, see where we're at, see how we're getting on with it, and basically sort of assess them, I guess. Do a little half-year check-in, I guess would probably be a good idea. Yeah. So what, what's your what's your first one you've got written down, Neil, that you said you were going to do and haven't done? No, I think I'll go through them all and do a bit of a status update in terms status. of... Status. Where I'm at. <laughs> um, so my, my first one was read 12 books. So I think I started off with the, the year describing in the first episode we ever did is like, I, I haven't read many books in my life. And I think the first, I can't remember what I said, but I haven't read a full full back-to-back book, yeah, pretty much ever by the time I turned, I don't know, 
30. So I really wanted to get get into books and then try and make a conscious effort of reading more, putting down my phone in the evenings, trying to do a chapter in the mornings, etc. And I am five books into my 12 book challenge, which, yeah, I think is a pretty awesome achievement. Um, trying to think of some highlights of books I've read. So let me quickly try and do it. There's an app I call I use called Goodreads, which um, allows you to basically rate your books, the, the ones you've read, maybe write a wee, write, write a wee, wee note about them. Neil. Neil, can I can I just while you're while you're doing that, I'd just like to introduce to the audience Neil's Neil's way of uh, ranking things. He's pretty good at the the sort of star <laughs> thing, right? So I get a nice little message from one of our one of our friends, uh, Scott Bapti, who was actually on the podcast, and he mentioned me. He said Neil's Neil's on Vivino, isn't he? And Vivino is like one of these wine, you know, r- you know, ranking apps. And he's like, did Neil think that every single wine is a five out of five? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah, so Neil, Neil's I was about um, to tell you every book he's read is a five out of five. <laughs> not quite. No, I, I, I won't go through the ratings. But um, I've actually only it's only five I've read. I thought it was six. But um, anyway, outrageous. The the first one I read was Die with Zero. Good book, all about how to spend your money wisely and make sure you die with zero. The next one was from um, Marathon to Ultra. So another one of my goals for this year is running an ultramarathon. We can go into that in a, in a wee bit. The next one was The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. And then fourth one, Will by Will Smith, which was a pretty phenomenal um, autobiography of his of his life from start to finish, which is really interesting. And I've just finished Bear Grylls' um, Never Give Up book. So basically it's about his life, how he's gone through and what he's gone through, SAS and stuff like that, um, all the way up to making one of the most kind of one of the biggest adventure TV company production companies in the world, worth over a billion pounds. Which I don't know if pe- people might not be aware how big Bear Grylls is. I certainly didn't. He's probably got a bigger presence in America than he does in the UK now. But yeah, so like I'm really enjoying the books, and I actually I noticed I wear a Garmin device every every day, kind of twenty four hours a day, and. I notice if I'm in periods of like reading a lot, my average heart rate is generally down a few beats for the day, which, yeah, I'll take away from it. Probably just that a chill time. You're not looking at social media that maybe gets your heart rate up a little bit because you've seen annoying news or some a friend that's done something. You're just in a book and it's a lot more chilled. So how, how have you managed to fit in reading? Because obviously you're a dad with three kids, right? How How the heck have you managed to read five books? I find it sometimes hard enough just to read a chapter. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good challenge. Um, and these are not the books, so I, I wouldn't class like audio, audible as reading. These are the books I've physically read in my own time. And um, generally it's when the kids go to bed. So maybe Rebecca's out or she's busy working. I Instead of putting the TV on, putting YouTube on, I will generally read a book and you can get through quite a lot of chapters in an evening if you really want. Nice. And um and yeah, just holidays away. We kind of take some time out. And yeah, I've I've been and I, I kind of I've touched on this in another podcast, but I'd recommend I I've I've got a Kindle and I I, I really struggled reading books in a Kindle. And I feel that when you've got the physical copy in front of you, you can see how much you've read and how much you've got to go. And if you've got if you can see you've got only two two pages or three pages left of a chapter. You, you might find yourself trying to finish that chapter just so you can bookmark it in a good place. But in a Kindle, you've got no real tactical feedback of like how far you're progressing through the book. Yeah, you've, you've got that progress bar, but I've never really thought that, that was like, ever really helpful. But then there are advantages of, the, of a Kindle. For example, you can highlight things, you can save them, you can then transfer them onto like a, a notes app and you can like go back and highlight things and whatever else. And it's, it's also just one small device rather than how much books take up, I guess. But I'm still, I still agree with you. Like I'm still with you on the whole enjoying a book more than I would enjoy, say, a Kindle, for example. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, what was your first goal that you... Well, the, the whole goal thing, I was kind of like, I, I actually, I don't think I've got notes on what my, what my goals were going to be <laughs> for the year, so I've completely <laughs> forgotten. But I'm, I'm sure I can remember some of them. The, the biggest, the, probably the biggest one was like, I, was, I wanted to get back into fitness this year. And when I say you get back into fitness, you're like, Gordon, what do you mean? You're bloody, you used to be a bloody personal trainer. But I guess it was kind of, 
there was a mix of stuff going on where ultimately as a personal trainer I had to look a certain way so with that it's kind of you know there's a pressure for me to exercise I worked in a gym so it meant the barrier to entry was very easy there was no friction for example then like the 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 difficulty was the lockdowns kicked in so then it meant it broke my kind of cycle of exercising and then when you've got this kind of self visualization of or self actualization of who you think you are or where you've certainly been from a physique perspective and strength perspective when you stop training for some time you then get you know knocked back a peg so I was kind of like oh you know going back is gonna be difficult then I started a new job and I didn't realize how much employment generally speaking kind of takes up your life and your time so I've kind of been a bit itsy bitsy with it but I guess I'm doing I have to look back and think I'm doing better than I was prior to setting the goal I guess you know, I've, like I said, I've been running, so I've got I've done four or five runs under my belt. I've been recording them all. I've been uh, optimizing steps as much as I possibly can because I do it through my Vitality Health Insurance thing. I get free coffees. I've definitely been going to the gym a bit more often, so I'll get in at least two times a week in the gym, so that's better. But it's still room for improvement, right? And I think uh, with things in the future, I reckon I can definitely up, up the game a bit more. And I definitely have a target to try and get some consistency of like three weight training sessions and at least one run a week. And the run kind of fits in nicely because also ultimately it's a holistic thing with weight training, but then it also means that me and David, my father-in-law, go for a nice jog park run thing every Saturday morning, which is it's just actually great fun. I really enjoy doing that because it gets him out, gets me out, accountability and all that kind of stuff. So that's been good. So I'm kind of like, I'm on the fitness thing and I'm doing it, but I could definitely do better. And that also coincides with like eating and whatnot. I mean, I've just come back from America and America's notorious for its uh, its calories overall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I've, I was enjoying quite a few of those. So I guess, yeah, it's still a work in improvement. It's still, it's, it's getting there, but I, I still have the feeling, have the desire, have the purpose and the realization that I need to get it done because it's for the kids, it's for the grandkids. And yeah, yeah, I guess that's kind of, uh, nice. It's not a cop out, but I'm kind of I'm doing something at least. Yeah, because I, th- I think there's a period of time, especially during lockdowns and stuff, where you did nothing. So as you, as you look back, you're definitely doing something, which is better than nothing. It is, and you've I've got to take into perspective. I think one of the hard parts is having like competed at high level in bodybuilding, high level in powerlifting. You know, I'm not I'm not the same person I was then. In a, in a weird kind of woohoo way, like I don't have I don't have as much time as I did then. I yeah, also yeah. I also did it for reasons that were, you know, aesthetic based. Whereas I couldn't give a flying shit right now. I'd, I'd like to be a little bit, like lose a little bit of the pouch. But but at the end of the day, it's it's kind of, I know I need to do it, but I do it for like my future self and my future things. Yeah. So I just got to do it. I got to get get better at it. So you know, when we come to the end of the year, we'll review this again. I'm sure, and I'll be like, yeah, bro, I'm in the gym. I've got my biceps. <laughs> yeah, I'm deadlifting 250 kilos. We. Yeah, well, that kind of leads on to my my next goal I set myself, which was quite a a measurable goal. So it was run one thousand miles, and not not in a winter, not over a few weeks, but over the year. And I've typically ran between five and seven hundred miles a year for the last three or four years. So I've been pretty consistent. But I've always had seen friends and and people I follow just hit that thousand thousand mile mark, and it just seems quite cool to manage to say I ran a thousand miles this year. So um, how am I doing against that goal? I guess, Gordon, I'll put a question to you. How do you think I'm doing against the goal? You're 400 in. Oh, well, um, I'm 502 in. 502? <laughs> that very Scottish. So yeah, halfway, which, which is quite a nice mark. Um, I've been off running for the last couple of weeks with an injury, but still managing to go on the bike. Um, so I've got a spin bike in, in the house and I've got a push bike I can take out. So my fitness levels, I think, have probably stayed the same. I've been pushing myself pretty hard on the bike. Um, I'm, I did try it. I did go for a run in London, actually. Um, you might laugh at this, Gordon. Uh, I went through the Fathering Tunnel. The Father... The Rotherith. Rod, Rotherith Tile Tunnel, which um, it was about 45 degrees Celsius under there and millions of cars gridlocked. It was fucking horrendous like i think my colleague i don't know if it was a joke or she was like yeah you should go and run under there i was like yeah i'll give it a try i remember trying to find the entrance to it and um i couldn't find it so i asked this random guy in the street it was like half six in the morning and i was like where's the tunnel where's the entrance to the tunnel and he was like it's a bit far and i wouldn't recommend running down it 
I'll be fine. Like, I'll do it. So he, he pointed me in the direction, found the entrance, really quite a small entrance to get in there. And um, there's, a, there's, there's a curb, like a, a pavement, probably just enough length for a runner to go down. Here's me. <laughs> Trying to get from one end to the other, like halfway point, I was like, I, I think I might need to stop and just take a breather. I, I can't stop. Like I'm in the middle of a tunnel. Like <laughs> no, I just got to keep going. So um, I got to the other end, but I was I was a mess. Because um, there's terrible, there's terrible ventilation in there, Neil. It's like you yes. basically just run, you just run into the old school pub. You know, back <laughs> in the day, where there's loads of folks smoking. <laughs> You're basically just running around that. Yeah, and the heat, like it was just. It was it was absolutely absolutely horrendous. Um, anyway, so I'm back running, which is great. I'm still on target to hit my thousand miles for the year, which um, motivates me. And yeah, it's, it's it's weird feeling that like that's a massive goal. Like I've got to average twenty miles a week for the year. Um, so yeah, trying to keep that momentum and keep that routine is is hard, but I'm managing it. Yeah, it's good. It's that's solid. Like a thousand a thousand miles in a year is a pretty cool challenge. And I guess, are you still on, on route towards your ultra or what are you going to do with that? Yeah, so like before I got injured, I was averaging like 35, 40 miles a week. And I would say I was ready for it, but I just got that niggle. I, I ran through the niggle, it got worse. So yeah, like I, I just need to get a date in. I, I'm probably fit enough. I just need to do it. But then like, so there's, there's, there's a point, point in me actually. So I can't, I can't remember who, wh- wh- where I heard this or who I was listening to, but Running an ultra isn't healthy. No, you mentioned that, but I've said that already. Oh, yeah. So, like, there's, there's a quick. I'm, I'm questioning. Like, I, this is probably the maximum I'm going to do. Like, I've set myself. I'm going to do the ultra. I, I want to tick tick that box, but I, I'll never. I don't think I'll ever do a hundred miler because the, the kind of scars it can leave on your lungs and your heart and yeah. Yeah, Neil, it's it's not great. Like, a- anything that generally speaking takes you to like an extreme level. I guess it isn't good for you. You know, there's a there's a good paper I think I've mentioned it before that looks at uh, sedentary people, so people just sitting their ass all day, people who go for a run every so often, and then professional runners. And you look at injury rates across those three groups: the sedentary and the trained get injured about as much as the same. So the professionals and the sedentary, the ones sitting do nothing, they're injured about the same. There's a much lower rate of injury in people that do like the casual five k. Or the casual, maybe even a ten, maybe a ten k, but casual five k generally, and that's that's the like that's the that's the sweet spot, right? You know, it, it's sometimes it's it's not about setting that goal, right? It's not about saying, hey, you know, I've got to do this and that progression goal. Sometimes it's about just just do the same thing, just yeah. In, yeah, enjoy yeah. the process. Yeah, so I think I'll I'll, I'll get to my my ultra marathon and then and then I still do the half. I think half marathon's a good good distance, pretty pretty sustainable. Like I don't feel like I've got to recover that long after half marathon. Um, but uh, the, the reasons I'm running and the reasons I'm I want to keep fit is is to increase my lifespan and stuff like that. And people that generally r- r- run marathons or ultra marathons, their lifespan's probably been reduced by 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um. Yeah, that's fair on the fitness front. I think from 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 the fitness now. I think I was talking about like I don't know if I was talking about finances before, but we're certainly talking about the house aspect of things from a goal perspective. There's no question I'm poorer from a cash perspective. That's all. That's floated away into the sphere of some <laughs> builder's pocket. That's that's gone. Well, it's certainly close to it anyway. Um, yeah, there was kind of there was lots of saving. During sort of the pandemic aspect, as you can imagine, there was no commuting and whatever else. I was earning well. My interest rate on my house went down to like 0.6% because I had a tracker mortgage and the Bank of England's base rate dropped so much. But either way, it was like, it was a good scenario. So I saved lots of cash. And ultimately, I think this year was about realizing it, you know, saving up all that money. Like you talked about the books that you read, the die with zero stuff. Money, money is just a number that sits in your bank account. And ultimately, you know, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to just let it sit there and accrue interest? Or are you going to use it for pleasurable activities? Even on things that don't really matter, you know, things like cars. Car, and Car maintenance. Yeah, yeah <laughs> car maintenance, exactly, Neil. But, you know, maybe you're going to do things like that. But then ultimately this money was used and was earmarked for development of our, uh, of our Sherwood Road property. And we've used it well. It's now at that point where we've got white walls and it just looks incredible. And it's going to be just, it's going to be one of the nicest things to live in for the next 10 years at the very least. So on that front, it's, it's money well spent. 
the house value's almost definitely gone up because of what we've done to it. Whether it's gone up as much as I've spent, I kind of hope so. Uh, I'm kind of confident it has. And we're just going to get so much pleasure out of it. So I definitely was, was put, are now poorer in terms of a cash perspective. My assets are, are doing good. But I kind of feel like that's what you, where you should be when you're at my age or certainly our age. You should be relatively asset rich and have things working for you rather than cash in the bank. Whereas if you're retired, you know, you want some cash to go off in your fancy flights and holidays and buy nice things and whatnot. Because ultimately that's what you've, your life energy has been put into, right? Your work's been put into it. So that's been good. And it's just been a bit, yeah, but juggling finances, I guess, like thinking about what, what are the outgoings now, working out that childcare is now a thousand pounds a month, you know, the, you know, <laughs> kitchens and all that kind of thing. And, you know, we still managed to get like a 0% loan on the kitchen, which I found insane. You know, they're still giving out basically free money. There's probably a catch somewhere. They're probably charging more for the kitchen than is reasonable or whatever else. But at the end of the day, it gave me some liquidity, it gave me some movement and I can pay it off now because I've still got it. In the, I've got that in the bank to pay it off, but. Ultimately, having that flexibility is probably a good idea. And then, yeah, so I've got no stocks and shares really. I've got an ISA still sitting there, but it's not got much in it. But I'm kind of glad because all the stuff's basically started to tank pretty hard, like Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that kind of things absolutely tanked. So I'm kind of glad that I don't have much in the bank anymore. And I basically sold at the peak in 20, 2021, the end of 2021. It was like December time. I basically sold all my stocks and shares stuff and I made a decent decent return. But that also then meant it's it's now probably going to be worth less if I just kept it in there. So I guess financially, I've spent it all, but it's going to be on <laughs> something really good, I guess. And that was kind of the goal was to get this house done. It's almost done. I reckon by the end of this month, hopefully we should have a floor at least and the kitchen and stuff and operational, maybe, hopefully. We'll see. Nice. Nice. So yeah, my, my second or third goal was around kind of money and having a three month buffer and um, learn, learn and understand financials, etc. So I read that, that book about with GL Collins, which is pretty interesting, but yeah, in terms of how things are progressing to that, I think in our kind of ISAs and stocks and shares, they have tanked a, no, not a massive amount, but a substantial amount, but still got money in there. Um, savings in the bank, a lot of it's going to the car. So we'll see how that how that goes. And yeah, like uh, as, as Gordon mentioned, we're in that kind of point in life where money in the bank, as long as you've got enough to sustain a, a rainy period, I guess, you should be okay. Um, Rebecca's bakery is doing really well, but we're kind of keeping that money in, in the company just now. So um, yeah, we just need to see how things, how things progress. But I wouldn't say I'm, it doesn't keep me up at night. I wouldn't say I'm concerned. But and that's 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 the good thing, right? Is that money ultimately underpins everything. So, you know, from a year to year perspective, as long as you can continue not have to worry about buying that three pound Starbucks, then I think I think you're doing okay. So yeah, that, that side of stuff is, is is fine. And yeah. What can I say really? It's it's part of growing up is building your own house thing and uh <laughs> it's, it's extending it and all that kind of thing. Yeah, and like um, we're actually we're, we're coming to uh point our mortgages up in may next year or not our mortgage up but the deal the rate we're on so there's a conversation to have i think probably this year is do we pay the penalty fee um which is not that not actually that much and get the get a decent in uh, decent interest rate fixed because if we i think next year is going to be a bit turbulent in terms of how things are looking recession and all that Sh- should have done that last year or earlier this year yeah, Lock, locked yourself in because <laughs> that's what that's what we that's what we did. I did two five year fixed because I knew that there was probably going to be a rate rise. Like there was no way it was going to sit at that low level. So I got this crazy low interest rate on both properties. So yeah, we just take away, pay them off a bit, and then we'll just ultimately see what happens. The so we've done fitness, done finance on my front. This is again just a bit more of a review thing, but this year's been a good solid bit of travel, which has been quite nice. We I went to Dubai which was very cool. I went to business class aspect of things in Dubai and Emirates, which was a very, very, very cool experience, in fact. I went to the um, the Amalfi Coast, so that was with, in Positano, which is really, really nice with Laura for a little trip for us. And where else have I been, Neil? Just got back from the United States. Paris for a day. <laughs> I went to Paris for a day. That was kind of interesting. Did the Eurostar business class, which was kind of fun. And... 
yeah, the travel bit has been good. It's been nice to get back into that travel aspect of things because it's been so it was so crap for like two years, and now we can go on a plane, go somewhere, see nice sights. It's enjoyable and whatever else. And I've, I've yeah, I've really enjoyed the fact that we've managed to get back into some sort of travel rhythm. And I'd be probably pretty upset if we'd still be in a pandemic and couldn't go anywhere. And everything seemed to be opening up a little bit. Like there's still sort of some like mask things, but they're not really they're kind of like not mandatory. So there's kind of that happening. So that's been really nice. Traveling, doing some same things, going around. Like I've been up to Scotland, I think, once or twice. Something like that. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Neil's been down quite a few times, so that's been nice. Hopefully coming in August, fingers crossed. Yeah. All good. Like travel. That's been nice. Cause I think I'm pretty sure I had that as a goal at the start of the year. Yeah. Um yeah, a bit like I've done all my goals, but just a, an observation about how my year was so at the start of the year I was still working for oh I think I think I knew that we were being purchased. So the startup I was working for was bought by another company that has opened up more travel for me, more opportunities, which has been nice when I say travel just to London. But as I said at the start, it's nice to go down to London for a few days, a couple of times a month and come back up to Scotland. Why, so, why um, do, you, do you like the travel with work? What's your kind of take on that? Yes, I do. Um, I, I don't know. It depends what frame of mind I'm in or it depends what mood I'm in. But generally speaking, yes, I enjoy it. Um, last week was a bit hardcore. I got the, a flight at quarter to six in the morning. And so it was crazy early in the morning. And then I worked loads. And then on the way home, I didn't get back to like 11 at night on the Friday. So that, that, that was a long, a long week. Um, so it depends what, what the hours are like and that kind of thing. But yeah, I think generally speaking, I enjoy traveling. Yeah, it, it's, it, it can be very good. It's, you know, if it's certainly if it's new places that you've never been before. And equally, because you come to London, you've got me here as well. Like you can always yeah. come and stay with me. You can always hang out with me if necessary. We can always do a pod. We can go out for beers, yeah, well, go out for dinner, that kind of thing. This weekend, it would have been I would have been with you if if you weren't jet setting to coming back from America. You would not <laughs> enjoyed staying in our house last night. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Um, so the tra- travel thing, I did fit this finance travel thing, and I think one of my one of mine was trying to find a work life balance of some kind. So, you know, I started a new job, started an employment life, and it was kind of like right, well okay, this means I get paid holidays. This means that I get, you know, some sick leave. I get all these kind of benefits that ultimately come with employed life, which didn't come with sort of that freelance life that I was living. So I don't think I found that. <laughs> the work, the work, Still was, looking. Pretty, work was pretty, uh, it's pretty hectic. It's hard. It's sometimes long hours and whatnot. There was some elements of balance. You know, I got home in the evenings at least two or three times a week to do bath time during the week. I also, I've taken holidays, like I had that two and a half weeks off, which I got paid for, which is just really nice. You know, the first time in my career taking two and a half weeks off, barely answered if any emails or even looked at anything. So that was really good. And I guess I can't really see it on the on the horizon being, you know, a good work-life balance. But at the end of the day, it's kind of, it's worked out. It's, it's done what it needs, needed to do. And it's been a kind of an interesting experience learning the sort of employed life, I guess, it, it, in, in, and just adjusting, you know, where I have to be somewhere at a certain time, generally speaking, you know, there's not kind of like an ad hoc type of thing where I can negotiate when I turn up or when I do it. And it's it's kind of interesting having a steady income month to month, which is, which is it's also kind of weird. The national insurance went up in April, so I ended up paying more more tax. So I got less in my bank account, which was very disgusting, very upsetting. <laughs> and also that tax thing, that being employed is is terrible. <laughs> for, for yeah, Absolutely do you get the horrific? Have you been getting the emails now from HMRC saying your like your tax code has changed? If something changes, do you get that? I, no. I must have I must have signed up for it, but you can log in to see your tax code and how much tax you pay and your projected tax. And um, if things like if you get like new benefits from work or you put more money into your pension, your tax code generally changes. So every time you get an email saying your tax code is changing, I always panic because it's like, am I going to be paying more tax? Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's been great. You know, my tax bill was higher than my best ever salary for my first first uh, <laughs> job as a personal trainer. Yeah, that's mad. Cool. So l- l- let's move on. We've kind of covered our our goals we set. Um, so in the next six months, is there anything you want to focus on, or is it just much the same? Try and get better at fitness and health. Try and get a better work life balance. I guess much much in such the same to some extent. You know, I think I, I said I wanted to get onto YouTube. 
and yeah. I think I think now I probably have some time to be able to do it. And we have like the nice kitchen and things I can film in, and I just need to prioritize it. I think I need to get back into that making a video once a week because it helps. It helps me as a creative, right? It helps me get better not only as my job, but it's a good long term potential prospect of creating these videos because it's just it is better. So I guess that's one thing. Uh, YouTube, get onto that, start uploading again because my previous ones have had one of them had one hundred forty five thousand views. Like that's a that's a pretty chunky video. Seven hundred pounds I made on that one. Yeah, the fitness thing definitely. Like I want to just. Like part of me also wants to do a video about like the dad bod thing, so I'd like to maybe try and do a transformational video, like a thirty day challenge sort of thing, because they did pretty well. So that's why kind of part of the fitness thing would coincide with the whole YouTube thing. I can make a video about it, and you know whatever. So plan all that, get that done. Keep reading more books. I have, like you say, I have enjoyed overall. There was one I down, I bought at the airport called building a second brain so it's about note taking and capturing ideas and things written by a guy called tiago forte really good book actually i'd highly recommend it very very good read and i also read coincide like kind of in junction with that i was reading uh, elements of fucking style so it's a book that basically helps you write properly because my my grammar is shocking and terrible at the best of times but it's one in which it basically is a a unique way of teaching you english i guess with some really <laughs> interesting uh interesting ways to do it so it was a that was a nice book I, I i'm gonna try and combine those two because they're slightly different uh but they offer a kind of yeah helping you progress overall financially i think my goal now since the kit the sort of the house is kind of built up is to get a bit more of a stable footing you know start to maybe curb some spending and things and just kind of settle into a, a better rhythm i guess you know hold yeah, better rhythm with the financial stuff because we've just been constantly paying out like two, three, four, five thousand pounds a week for this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing. And don't get me wrong, it was all allocated, right? It's all there, but that feels pretty hard when you've been doing that for quite some time. It's quite a lot of it's gone. Yeah, yeah? I'd like yeah. I'd like to have another another healthy cushion sat in the bank or certainly start this sort of saving thing back up again. Get get in the mix and just yeah, do that. Go on holiday again, probably another goal, like one more little holiday before the end of the year with Laura. Host a barbecue at my house with the new kitchen and everything that's there, which would be fantastic. I'd really enjoy that. And that's it. Yeah, so the fitness thing, get that back up and running. The YouTube thing, get a better footing in terms of finances and savings. And then have a barbecue at my house. Nice. <laughs> um, mine's yeah, much the same, actually. So, like, carry on with my running get back into that 20 miles 30 miles a week um yeah get my seven books i've got left six books i've got left of the year which should lead me nicely into my 12 books for the year and yeah try and get some money behind us a bit more money so this this month has been a bit annoying with the car but yeah get back on track with that and um in terms of trips probably just keeping it local in scotland obviously i'll be down in london um for various things but Isle of Sky will probably um, appear on my map a few times. And yeah, Christmas, I haven't even thought about Christmas. Maybe we have a goal of you doing a run with me, Neil. Oh, oh yeah. A 10k. When you come, oh God, give, it, give me a break. <laughs> Five, 5k five is and pull it up my ass already. <laughs> yeah, that's, maybe we should try and enter one. We could try and, try and plan Enter it. a 10k, are you mad? <laughs> you'll you'll okay. do it in about 30 minutes and you just want to beat me. That's what you do. Th do you just want to take a picture of me lying on the ground and you just be like, <laughs> look at me, I'm a runner. I've been waiting here for half an hour. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be up for potentially visiting that type of idea some at some point, I guess. Cool, cool. No, that sounds good. Um, anyway, I thought we'd... How are we doing for time? A bit of, a bit of reflection on the podcast. Do oh yes yeah we forgot i forgot about the end of the podcast so yeah like i I, di I have never had any expectations for this podcast whatsoever you know i wasn't like hey we got to get a thousand downloads you know we got to record a hundred days or whatever else i guess it was one thing i was like oh, could we do a year you know could we do 50 odd podcasts one one a week for a year because that'd be kind of exploring our lives and journaling our lives for an entire year together that'd be that would be quite fun so i guess that was the only thing and I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, this this one in particular has been a bit tricky, and there was one other one that I found a little bit difficult to get done because it was late and trying to record things, it wasn't working, and whatever else. 
But at the same time, I've I've liked how we've overcome any challenges that we've faced. We've committed to each other in terms of, hey, let's get a podcast in once a week at the very least. Sometimes we recorded two. I like how organized we've been. I'd like to see more reels on Instagram. That'd be quite nice, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, like it's been it's been a really, really good journey of doing this. And I, I honestly couldn't recommend it enough. I couldn't recommend podcasting enough to anyone. I don't I don't care if you think you've got nothing to say. We literally have nothing to say. We are the worst developed dads going, I reckon. You know, we've we've got nothing to say for them apart from kids that are potentially healthy. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that that is the prerequisite to being a, a good developing dad. But at the end of the day, I don't. I wondered if we'd struggle with content ideas, but we've managed to come up with thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, and maybe we could just reuse the the thirty. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. We could churn through content and whatever else. I, d- I don't know. I think I've got any goals for the podcast overall. Like, I'd like to see it continue growing. It's approaching sort of two thousand total downloads, which feels which feels pretty nuts to be honest. That's I would never even thought people would have downloaded two thousand times to listen to each of our episodes, which is which is pretty cool. I'd like. I'd like some more guest and more in-person sort of aspect of things, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'd like a, I just want a high quality, really good podcast. That's kind of all I'd, I'd really, really like. And, yeah. you know, long term, not an expectation, but a dream would be to be able to pay off your mortgage, Neil, with the, pre- pre- precedes, <laughs> or the proceeds of the sponsorship of the podcast. That, that would be sick. So, yeah. yeah. How, how, how do you think it's been? One day. No, I, th- I think it's been really good and like... It, it randomly comes up in conversation with friends they're like oh I heard you do a podcast or like when we went to the We Vegan Bakery and did the podcast that was kind of posted on the We Vegan Bakery social media and obviously my local friends in the local town now realise I've got a developing dad's podcast and um, so yeah I'm getting random questions from like other dads saying oh how, how's the podcast why did you start blah 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 I don't know if they've listened to them maybe they are listening hi how you doing but um, yeah like after it and maybe not this episode because it's been such a a hard one to get going but when we kind of get into deep conversation you almost think it's like it feels like a bit of therapy like you come out of it and you're a bit like i don't know not maybe not a weight's lifted off my shoulders but certainly talking does help and and all that good stuff so yeah really enjoyed it can't see any reasons to stop um be good to get trying to try and get back into the rhythm of like doing maybe two a week for the next couple of weeks because it's sunday night or almost sunday evening and we don't have one scheduled <laughs> it's quite that, stressful that- that's annoying, isn't it? That that's one of the one of the tips, I guess, from a from a, yeah from any part of this podcast overall. It's all been about how can we record this or cre- or make this its highest quality we can, so it's going to sound amazing, but at the same time with the lowest level of friction. So it it, it all started from first of all, what's the recording equipment going to be used? So it's something that just basically we're all encompassing in one thing. We had these microphones that were on stands, so we we had that all set up. But then we realized the stands were kind of annoying and a handheld microphone would be much more fun to record on. So then we were switched to handheld microphones. Now we've kind of switched up the recording aspect of things again. It seems to be working okay. Hopefully it will. But we also then made sure that we recorded, you know, a week ahead or we had like a couple recorded so that we weren't chasing our tail when it came to a podcast overall. And today is an example of one of those where we <laughs> attempted to do it, but it didn't quite work out. So yeah, if you're thinking about starting a podcast, think of the highest possible quality for the lowest level of friction, and you will have a great time doing it. I, I think I think you'd agree, Neil. Yeah, no, I think I think you will. And um, and like another aspect of it, which we kind of knew would happen, but Gordon and I spoke maybe once or twice a week, once or twice a month before the podcast. Now we're spe- speaking pretty much every day, so that's quite a quite a nice thing because I, I I've got friends that don't speak to their siblings; they're like, o- older now and. I think that's quite sad. So having a project together definitely gets you communicating. and It, it and is, and it's that. kind of, I tend to find it's more like out of sight, out of mind to a certain extent. You know, the further you live apart, the, the, the less likely you are to talk to each other, which yeah. s- sounds terrible given all of, the, all of the technology that we have now, right? We've got mobile phones in our pockets that we can literally do a FaceTime with. But it is that kind of one-to-one thing that you just don't get. And, and there's also that kind of thing where you know, do people go out when they're adults, for example, and just go out for a walk with a friend? They don't really, or most <laughs> yeah. don't. They'll go to the yeah, pub, yeah. right? And they'll drink alcohol, which is not really a healthy affair. Whereas, so what I'm saying is, if you have a, a task or a project or an excuse to do something, it then ultimately turns into something much more, much better. So for me, this podcast has been a facilitator in that and ultimately us sort of bonding more, I guess. is And, and that's and that's a really good thing. 
Uh, I certainly think so. Certainly from a future perspective. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Anyway, I think on that note, we've hit hit 50 minutes. I think that was a... Finally got that podcast done. Episode 30. Now in history. It, it was. That that was that was one that I was just like, God, this is an actual struggle. Like, this is just annoying. And like I said, if you've got that friction and you're less likely to do it. But as always, just like a 5K run, Neil, or even a 10K run. It's nice when you get to the end and you realize you're done and you're like, oh, that was that was good. We got some bits yeah. and pieces done and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but either if- way, oh, Neil, oh. Neil's going to do it. Hold on. Sorry. We just had one of those unprofessional <laughs> moments where we, you know, I entered it. Neil thought he was going to outro it. So you know what, Neil? It's over to you. Thank you. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed listening to a recap of the last six months of 2022. Um, I wonder what the next six months will entail. Probably much the same. But anyway, if you set any goals, try and do a, a look back and how, how have you gone on with those goals? Do you need to kind of get realigned? Find your find your goals again and, and start working towards them. Um, you can watch this on YouTube. You can see other videos on YouTube, like our 360 video in the on the side of the River Thames, looking over London Bridge, which is pretty cool. It's got quite a, quite a decent amount of views as well, which is nice. Um, or you can see the one we're in the Wee Vegan Bakery, where you can see people coming in, getting cakes and coffee as we're doing a podcast. Anyway, we're also on Instagram, which is not very active, thanks to me, because the, the reels are just full of friction. It's quite a long process, and I want to try and find... Maybe I just need to work on the process, because... The way I, I kind of started doing it, it needs like three or four different tools online. You could upload it, download it, upload it, download it. It's just a faff. So we'll see. Anyway, thanks for listening. You can find us on all major platforms and leave us a review if you want. Cheers. See you later. <laughs>